Hello, good evening. We are getting set up here for Tuesday Night Felting. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost ran over the dog in his tail because he's right here. Of course, right next to me all the time, right, buddy? Yes, but we ate tonight, so we're not going to be a pain in the butt, correct? He says maybe. Maybe, maybe. All right, like usual, I'm jumping on the Facebook page, my Facebook page, to see, make sure I'm on there, and to check comments. All right. Okay, I think I'm up. Hi, Dana. How are you? Hopefully I'm saying your name right. I have... A very you know unique name as well so tonight we're gonna to be working on our 2d landscape that we started last week um so last week we started this it's on a piece of wool felt fabric and we're going um, to be adding some more details in here tonight so if you have um, any creative ideas to add to our project, um, send me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see. I have, you know, a couple ideas of my own. All right. So hope you guys can hear me. Let me know. Make sure everything's a okay with the broadcast. Sometimes Facebook does funny things. So I always like to get a comment or two Letting me know everything is good before we get going on the actual project itself. So send me a comment. Hopefully they will show up. Last week I had to like refresh my page several times. And then it would take me to a different page like it just did now. Facebook just gets more and more difficult. Okay, I think I see a comment. Great. Yay, got a comment. All right, now I can actually get into it. So, we're going to be working on this, like I said, and I think you guys heard me. Um, so, I've got all my supplies here. I've got my bags of wool ready to go. Now we just need to decide for sure what all we are going to do. So... And the dog's right here next to me to help. All right, so we are going to turn you down so we can look at the workspace. Do do do. There we go. Look how bright that is. Look at that. So we did all this last week if you weren't here to see. Um this is on wool felt fabric, a piece that I cut out. So that was the white background, and then we added all the different wool and the colors um, to this. So we've got kind of a foreground here with the like the grassy field, and then it goes back into um, the trees here and a little bit of sky peeking up um, on the top. Now, I said last week at the end of the video, we were going to put um, some more stuff like in the front of this tree line, maybe like some bushes and other greenery, um, and then we'll add some things to this area. So, we are probably going to work from the back and work upwards. 
I added some flowers up here last week because I wanted to show how um, I do these flowers. They actually have a little bit of 3D texture to them. I don't know how well you can see that, but they do like pop out. Um, so I ball up a little ball of wool and then felt right in the center. So it is kind of um, more 3D-ish. So to add like some bushes and just some, you know, like shrubby type stuff in here, we can take um, a little bit of green, probably a darker green. I've still got some of my colors sitting here. And I'm just going to like lay out a little bit of this, um, this color, like in this vicinity. Maybe layer some color in here. This is a little bit of a brighter green, but not quite the green color I have in the grassy area. I'm also going to just like add a tiny bit of this darker color just like in front of and like the top of this grassy area just to kind of give a little bit of a transition and then I'm going to felt this down And I'm not like doing super crazy details or anything in these like bush area or shrub area. It's just I just think it gives it a little bit more depth along there. And we can just add in a little bit of a brighter green here just some highlights just a tiny bit and I had a good idea looking at this that we're going to add a little path right like into the woods here. So I'm going to take a little bit of this brown and I'm actually going to mix it with this this is like a dark brown almost black color Now will give us like a different shade, a little bit different shade than like the trees, but not quite super bright because this is like in the shadows of the trees. So just so you guys know, I started today, just started uploading these Tuesday felting videos to my YouTube channel. I got one completely up that has like the title and description and everything and I just created a new um, 
oh, what do you call it, like a section or a playlist, they call it, that will be all of the the felting live from Facebook. So it's, if it's easier to go there and watch, you can go there and re-watch those videos. I uploaded like five more, I just have to go back on and um, actually publish them and add like the title and all the details too. And I'll be adding like links to my website as well. So you can find stuff anywhere you click. Okay, so I'm going to add this path in here. Now, we have to keep in mind like the perspective of the picture, that the stuff back here is farther away. So the farther in the woods it goes, the smaller it gets. So I'm going to start back here. And make this a little bit thinner. A little bit narrower path. And let it get a little bit wider as it comes up. And then maybe we'll take it like right on. Out the side here. Now I narrowed it back up again when it turned because you're looking at it from a different angle and you wouldn't see as big of a stretch of road if it's coming towards you rather than it's um, you're looking. I hope you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to explain. Okay, I want to make it a little bit darker back there. So I'm going to blend that again just a little bit darker, just a little bit. I don't want it to look like a tree. And I don't want it to be really bright. So I started out darker back here and then made it progressively lighter as it comes out of the woods and into the open. Um, I'm going to try switching off my Wi-Fi for a little bit, I think. 
the picture isn't looking super great right now. It's pretty amazing the difference in the internet because today I went and uploaded like six hours of video at my farm store, which has um, Comcast cable internet. And then um, like at home, that would take me like literal days to do. If that. So we'll see how this goes. Sometimes I have to play with it a little bit, but it's amazing the difference in my internet. Okay, so we made a little path here. Um, I'm going to grab the color of my tree trunks. And I'm actually going to make um, a little branch here that comes off this tree and kind of across the path. So, you know, it looks like that, that tree is up front and the path is going behind it. Keep trying to find my colors. There's some of it. Okay. So, alright, I swear, oh, there it is. Sometimes this disappears, and it just fell into my lap. So I wanted to make um, a little bit more of this brushy area um, to give more perspective, like, to the road. I'm going to put it along the roadside here, or the path. Not so much a road, but the path. So we're going to do that. Okay, I kind of liking that now. Now we're gonna pull out my brown bag and grab a different color brown. Yes, I have like three, three or four different shades of brown. This one's kind of a reddish brown, but we haven't used this yet in this um. In this project so it will be like a good contrast color so what I'm gonna do with this now um, I'm going to create a little fence along the edge here so one of the easiest and quickest ways 
to make a little fence. A little wooden, wooden fence. Is to take a strip, a long strip of wool. And we're going to make the fence rails first. And we're just going to go across. I twisted um, this little strip of wool here. And we're going to go across here. We've got one, and then we'll do a second rail. And then we can take some more brown and we'll do the actual fence posts and then do one right here at the corner. And then we'll just put some post every so often. And I'll put one more here. And then I'll do a second stretch right here on this side of our little path. And see, as I go, we're just adding depth by adding different layers. Have the trees in the background, and then we did this brushy stuff in the path. Then we're adding in the fence.
and the old dog is barking in the other room. So we'll just hope the ones in here don't bark. It's okay, Twigs. Come here. Good girl. She's thinking about it. You know, we have four dogs in the house, and we did have five, and that was a lot. Four dogs is still, can be testy at some times, but I do want a puppy. <laughs> Besides the giant white fluffy things outside that are technically puppies, but they're so huge, they just don't look like puppies. Mr. Jock is, let's see, they are like seven months old. And I weighed Jock the other day and he is, he was 83 pounds, which I'm pretty sure is accurate. I'm using our old, um, like one of those really old scales. I don't even know what to call it, but it's like on wheels. And you use the little, the different weights to, you know, hang on there and you move the little thingy like they did at the, when you took your weight at the doctor's, you step on the thingy and they move the little thingy around to get the right weight. Well, we have one of those old antique scales, but I'm pretty sure it's still accurate. Oh, I was thinking they were starting to bark because um, Mark got back home, and he did. But I couldn't see because he's not pulling up in the view of my window. And then I just heard the chicken start making noises out here, and sure enough, he's there. <laughs> see, the chickens can be like alarms as well. Okay, there, we made a little fence. And now, if anybody else has any suggestions of what we want to put in the foreground, I'm probably going to put some sheep in there because, you know, of course, that's what my brain thinks about. I'm going to pull out some white. If you hear rumbling in the background, it's just a skid steer. We are, um, we borrowed a bale squeeze from a friend which pretty much clamps on the sides of the round bales but we wrap them in plastic for silage bales so if we have to relocate them you need to use something that's not going to damage the plastic too much so we borrowed this because we need to move a whole bunch of bales that are in the way of where the new the barn is going to be built So if we would have known last year we were going to be putting the barn up this year, we wouldn't have put the bales there, but you know, sometimes things just happen. 
So that's probably going to be one of my projects the next few days is um, moving a bunch of round bales. So when I do my little sheep and like far away sheep, um, I make a little white, white oval and then make a little, like little another tiny oval for the head. And depending on where you place it, it can look like they're grazing or they have their head up. This one's kind of, um, down. It's harder to see in the, in your video. But it's kind of face down to look like it's grazing. I generally go for white, white sheep with black, like, head and legs because it's much easier to, like, tell that they are, that's what they are. That's what, you know, the classic sheep look like. Or at least they have portrayed in many photos and whatnot. Um, just like the far away, like the sheep in the distance, generally it's harder to show like an all like white sheep because that's more, you know, we have more white face sheep or even speckled. So that's harder to show. Is if you do your little white body and then here's a little white head And little white legs. Now it just kind of looks like to me like a little splat of wool. Little white wool. Like that doesn't really look like a sheep to me. Looks kind of like a white turtle as well. And that's why I do black. there's a couple sheep. Now we got to put them different directions.
These are little tiny pieces of wool. It takes a while to finagle them where you want them to go sometimes. So there's a few sheep grazing in the background. I'm going to add just a couple more. I think over here, because I want to add some stuff in the foreground, but I want to make sure that there's things in the background and that it will all make sense. I want to do a couple things that I don't usually do that I think will be cute. Okay, we got lots of sheep here. All right. So, what I want to do is come right in here and drop in a big old tree.
I actually should have grabbed, I got one more shade of brown. I should have grabbed that. That's okay. I can layer that in here a little bit. And the little tree is going to branch off. So this would be like that you're standing like just in front or behind this big old tree looking out. And we're just going to make a few different branches here. A few more than the ones we did in the background just because it's so close. If you've ever felt a trees a lot, you know 
the detail that you can put into them and all the branches that you can make. I'm really putting a lot of detail to these. Can even add like a little bit of shadowing. So there's my big old tree. I have one more shade of brown. I just don't know if I have it here or not. That's the same. Is that the same? I think that's all the same. Hi, I saw Sandra posted. I don't know if you're still watching or not, but your yarn looks great. I'm very happy for you guys. That's awesome. I know you've been working on it for a while. And your husband's love for old equipment and... <laughs> Um, just tinker, tinkering around with all that stuff is pretty amazing as well. Okay, so we added our tree. So I need to add like some green to this as well. Um, so we are going to go back to, I need like one more shade of green and I don't have another shade of green I feel like you need 10 shades of green for projects like this problem is I don't have a good dark green right now so it's hard to blend colors to get where I want to be but this one that one's kind of different but I don't have a lot blend these guys together a little I just don't want it to completely blend in with the um, the grassy area and I don't want it to blend in with the trees in the background so much Twixy Twix the little dog is running amok I just need to sit down and try to dye out some different greens for myself to use. Green is a, a harder color though to get um, like the right shades because it will, it does like to go blue. Which you can always add a little yellow to it. But like the dark green dyes. A lot of those like to lean blue. I do need to order some more dyes though. It's like on the to-do list, but it's always in the back of my mind. Okay, so this is a little blended. So this does kind of blend in a little with the background, but we're going to layer in some more color.
Okay, we're going to felt this down. Then we can take a little bit of this brighter green and layer that in here. Okay, now I can come back in and pop out a few branches because most of the branches we let go behind the green, but there's some that we can see. So we'll bring those out. Okay, a couple of things I might want to do here is have my flower colors here. Now I can go back in and add some more like flowers around here and maybe um, like just in front of the tree as well. And I could do different colors if I wanted to. Um, now the other thing that I think I'm going to do is after I finish this, I'm going to give it a good wet felt 
for like the finished product. Um, I did that after felting, like completing felting the deer, and that worked really well. I loved how that turned out. So I think I'm going to do that. And then next week, I will show you the results. Unless you want to see me wet felt it, let me know. Maybe I'll post that option as well to watch the wet felting. But we have done that in the past. And it wouldn't be anything too crazy and fun. All right, so I might add some more flowers up here. I'm debating about whether to make this like an apple tree or not. Um, but that about wraps it up for the moment. If I think of anything else I would like to add, maybe I'll do that and post you a picture later on. Um, but I think that's about it for tonight. I'm trying to test out a theory with Facebook as I was trying to download um, my videos today, my previous um, my previous Tuesday felting videos. I was trying to download those to upload to YouTube, and some of them Facebook wouldn't let me download. And I'm not sure why, but I was wondering if it's because they were over an hour long, because some of them were, um, and the rest of them I think were under an hour. So I'm going to try to stay like right under an hour, like 50 some minutes to see if that works. And I'll try to download and post this one, see how that goes. So before we wrap this up, um, cause Lee says it'll be interesting to see how the post picture, um, after I wet felt it, um, goes since I used the wool fabric and not a background that I made. Yes, it will be interesting. Um, yeah, the more of the wet felting will be for to kind of smooth this out, I think. Um, because the wool fabric underneath probably won't shrink that much because usually you get some shrinkage when you wet felt. But I can't imagine they'll shrink too much because I don't think I've done a wet felting with the fabric before. So that will be interesting to see. But I like the look of the finished wet felted piece with the deer. So I think we're going to go for that. So anyways, um, all right. I think that about wraps it up for tonight. So we will see you again next Tuesday at six Eastern. And don't forget if you haven't been on my website yet, I think I put it in the description of the video, maybe hopefully. I hope so. Um, but my new website is launched. And if you're one of the first people to order from the website, you'll receive a $25 off coupon, the first two people. So um, that is still, that offer is still up. So go and check out the new website. Maybe find something you like and support the new website. Give us a boost. So we'll see you again next week on Tuesday. Thanks and happy felting.